Hello friends, I welcome you all to the uh, next class of our ECG and in today's session we will be discussing the vectorial analysis of normal cardiogram and uh, we will so add some more points onto the how to understand the left axis deviation and right axis deviation, how does the vectors they change or how does the arrow the changes in the left axis deviation, right axis deviation. Now what does vectorial or vectors means? Now vectorial means a arrow, a direction of the arrow which shows the direction of the current flow. Now if this is the arrow, black current, the black color arrow which indicates the direction of the current flow in the, in the normal electrical conduction in the heart which is from base of the heart to the apex. Remember this arrow, it travels from base of the heart to the apex of the heart. So, this arrow which is actually indicating the direction of the current flow is for normal heart. So, from the base to the apex it indicates that the first part to get depolarized is the septal areas of the ventricles and from the septal area the way of depolarization it spreads to the left and right endocardial apex or the apical part of left and right endocardial part okay and then it sprays eventually from the apex toward the base and from endocardium to epicardium so the 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 point to remember here is the normal flow of electric current remember the the conduction of impulse in the heart i'm just getting a brief through what is the direction of current flow uh, you can ask me doubts uh, hi mr vishak i can see Vish uh, vishik has joined here vishik you can ask your doubts in this session I, I can see your comments on the comment box. The conduction of impulse, what we are discussing right now is the conduction of the impulses, okay, conduction of the impulses and as we all know the, the conduction of depolarization or the wave of depolarization, the wave of depolarization, it spreads from base to apex. So that is what this arrow is indicated, base to apex and, and also the direction is from endocardium to epicardium. So that is how a normal flow or a, a normal direction of the electrical impulses travel from base to apex from endocardium to epicardium. That is why is it required, why is this way of depolarization required? See as the heart excites it contracts, as the heart excites it contracts. So how does it happen? The heart excites from base to apex that is from septal part but, but the actual way of depolarization it goes from apex to base. So base to apex is a septal part and, and the apex to base is through the ventricular muscles. So, apex to base is through the ventricular muscles. So, when the heart excites, it contracts in this manner from apex to the base, from apex to the base. But overall, the mass of ventricular muscles are so huge that, that the direction of electrical conduction, it always, it always goes from the base to the apex. So, this is the main electrical axis. Now, what do we, uh, what does the main electrical axis means? Remember, the mean electrical axis means that a, a flow of charge or way of depolarization it starts starts from a point in the base and travels towards the apex. So it is the apex of the heart which which gets excites very first. Okay. Now this is a normal distribution of the axis which is 59 degrees. So 59 degree is the mean electrical axis. I repeat 59 degree is the mean cardiac axis. It is a mean cardiac axis means 
on an average whether you consider a left ventricle or whether we consider a right ventricle the overall the overall impulse the overall uh, wave of depolarization it always it always travels from the base to apex in the septal areas and the direction or the degree is 59 degree which is the mean cardiac axis now if if we consider that this arrow or this axis it it moves it moves in a anti clockwise direction and it reaches to a zero means the axis becomes a very much lateral this axis becomes very much lateral or horizontal then we can say that zero is the axis now so the zero axis can be considered as a reference axis reference axis if if we consider zero as a reference axis and now i say that the cardiac action potential is shifting from left to right left to right then if it is moving in the clockwise direction now left to right because zero is on the left side remember zero is on the left side whereas 180 is on the right side okay zero is on the left side of our cardiac axis and 180 is on the right side of our cardiac axis so if i just if i just say that the cardiac axis is moving in a clockwise direction is moving in a clockwise direction and it is moving from the left to the right from the left to the right remember from the left to the right then it is going to reach the 180 degrees 180 degrees if this left to right shift is happening a partial shift is a partial shift then we say it is a axis of plus 90 degrees plus 90 degrees or if it shift it if shift too much beyond 180 degree then it is going towards a shifting of minus 90 degrees minus 90 degree means it is going off from right left to right and from right it is moving more towards the right direction and it can approach to a point where it can go to minus 90 degrees so the cardiac axis it keeps on yes uh the reference the zero axis can be a reference axis okay yes uh, dr ajas the reference axis we consider as zero degree as a reference axis and we consider uh, from zero to 180 as a as a value of left or right okay the mean cardiac axis is 59 degrees mean cardiac axis is 59 degrees now let us try to understand this axis this axis in ones again and what are the charge or what are the voltage what are the leads position here because leads position becomes a important criteria when you want to understand a vectorial of the heart remember for the vector of the heart for the vectors of the heart analysis we require three important leads those are bipolar limb leads and those bipolar limb leads they have a specific direction from right arm to left arm right arm to left leg and left arm to left leg so this specific directions and the negative and positive electrodes they give a a typical direction to the flow of current with respect to flow of electrodes so so we will just uh, study in a brief how does this axis of the uh, all the three bipolar limb leads are uh, working together how they are plotted this is a overall hexagonal representation of all the cardiac axes that is three bipolar and three unipolar or you can say augmented limb lead if i can say that the lead one lead one that is bipolar limb lead it is actually very much horizontal 
so the difference for the lead 1 becomes a reference lead it is 180 degrees to yes this is from 180 degrees to the I'll just shift my video here just uh, give me a second yes so now now all the diagrams are going to be visible properly okay so now what happens now what happens see if i just plot uh, the lead one the lead one is exactly horizontal lead one is exactly horizontal so lead one starts at 180 degree which is a negative voltage and lead one ends at positive degree which is on 0 degree. So, starts on 180 the negative voltage and ends on 0 degree which is a positive voltage. Okay. Now, if the cardiac axis is moving in this direction, if the cardiac impulse are moving in this direction, then you are going to have a positive deflection. Okay. If the current is flowing in the same direction, we are going to have a positive deflection. That is that's the simple basic criteria of it. If we try to understand lead 2 now, lead 2, lead 2 has positive electrode on left leg and negative electrode on the right arm. So, lead 2 goes in the direction of 60 degrees which is positive the left leg and negative to the right arm. Okay. If we try to understand lead 3, lead 3 now, lead 3 has a direction of, lead 3 has a direction of left arm and left leg where left arm is negative and left leg is positive. Now, if I if I take all the three leads, if I take all the three leads and I just combine them together from a single point, from a common starting point, the leads would look something like this. The lead one, the lead two right lead one the lead two and the lead three again lead one negative two positive lead two negative <coughs> sorry and lead three again negative two positive so the position of the electrodes gives us a very important information about the position of the electrode gives a very important information about in which direction the electrode is placed and in which direction the current is flowing. Now, if I say that, if I say that the cardiac impulse, the cardiac impulse, the cardiac impulse is flowing from base to apex base to apex then it is going from avr towards lead 2 the direction is from avr to lead 2 which which gives us a mean cardiac axis and hence if we place the electrode in exactly this position if we place the electrode exactly in this position from avr to lead 2 is our mean cardiac axis which is 59 degrees somewhat near about 60 degrees. So, if we place an electrode exactly in this position which is our lead 2, then we have a exact recording of QRS complex as a standard recording. So, lead 2 goes in exactly accordance of the direction of the direction of the cardiac impulse or the uh, conduction of the impulses of the heart. Now, since the direction of the impulse it actually matches with lead 2, it is very slightly matches with lead 1. Okay, it is also in the same direction, but the impulse is not too much in favor of lead 1. So, lead 1 has a quite smaller recording of QRS complex. 
did one the quite small recording of QRS complex and I think more of S wave, more of S wave because it is moving away. Whereas if you go for lead 3, it will have a Q complex, R complex and a but bigger of letter bigger of R and letter smaller of S wave because it is going towards lead 3, it is going towards lead 3. I give you a very basic explanation. QRS complex is a complete ventricular depolarization. The S wave will indicate if the electrical impulse is moving away from the electrode and R wave will give an indication if the impulse is moving towards the electrode or in the direction of the electrode. Now, now since we have all the leads placed in uh, placed here, I will draw three more augmented limits here. So, these are three are lead 1, lead 2 and lead 3. We are just going to draw three more limb leads, uh, by augmented limb leads, that's are AVR, AVL and AVF. And what is the significance? Look at the arrow of AVR. The AVR is position, the arrow of AVR is position towards right shoulder. So what does this say? It says that the position of AVR is from right, uh, uh, from the center of the heart towards right shoulder towards right shoulder. So, person is observing the heart from standing on the right shoulder. What will he see? He will see that all the impulses are going away from him. So, AVR as it is a positive electrode and the impulses travel towards lead 2, the AVR will have a exactly opposite of lead 2. AVR will have exactly opposite of lead 2. So, if this becomes your lead 2 recording, I will draw those lead 2 and AVR. They look like a mirror image of each other. So if I draw lead 2 in this fashion, P wave, QRS complex and T wave and if I plot AVR against it, it will look like P wave, QRS complex and T wave. They actually look the mirror image of each other because for lead 2, everything is going towards lead 2 and for AVR, everything is going away from AVR. Okay. Now, now, we will take one simple explanation of this cardiac axis or cardiac vector. How do we get? Since, since we have lead 1, lead 2 and lead 3 in position, okay, lead 1, lead 2 and lead 3 in position, lead 1, lead 2 and lead 3 in position, we can say that when, an, when a cardiac impulse is flowing, some part of impulses is getting recorded in lead 3. So, we have drawn an arrow of, of lead 3, okay. So, lead 3 has a smaller of AVR, uh, R wave, okay. Lead 3 has a smaller of R wave and lead 1 has a longer axis. You can see the lead 1 has a longer axis as compared to lead 3. So, lead 1 we will draw a longer axis QRS complex. I am talking about QRS complex right now because we are talking about ventricular depolarization. Now, this height of depolarization or this height of R wave we are going to plot on lead 1 and lead 3. So, lead 1 and lead 3 become a very important indications for identifying the cardiac vector. So, we, we identify the height of the vector. If, if they do not have any negative wave, suppose if this becomes your normal wave and this is your the wave which you are getting recorded now. So, there is a negative wave also is getting recorded. So, we are going to subtract it. Suppose if this is your uh, 10 millimeters height and the S wave is of your 3 millimeters height, then the actual output will be of 7 millimeters height. So, and if there are no negative waves, then you can take the all uh, number of boxes as a positive. So, this net movement will be you can say as 4 millimeters and for lead 1 you can say it as a 8 millimeters. So, we will just draw the exact magnitude what we are getting here and we will just plot them on their respective axis from the starting point and if it is in the direction of upwards then it means it is moving towards positive. If suppose if lead 1 gets gives you recording like this then what we are going to draw? We are going to draw it in opposite direction in this manner. Yes, of course T wave is also going to be negative because everything uh, that that is what I am saying. For AVR, uh, it's everything in AVR will be exactly opposite as that of as that of lead two. I got, I got your logic, uh, Doctor uh, Deepu. 
you 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 must be impre under impression that uh, the since the wave of depolarization it spreads and uh, it's opposite of depolarization so it should get a uh, upward recording but it's not possible the wave of repolarization it travels from base to apex i repeat again dr dipu the wave of depolarization the wave of depolarization or wave of excitation travels from apex to base but wave of repolarization travels from base to apex so the heart contracts in this fashion and the heart relaxes in this fashion that's how the impulses travel what we are going to do right now once you get this magnitude once you record this magnitude you draw a perpendicular line you draw a perpendicular line from the point where they have where they have terminated from the point where they have terminated so if we draw a perpendicular line from lead 1 and lead 3 they intersect at a single point they intersect at a particular point and their intersection their point of intersection gives you the cardiac axis or the vector of the heart are you, i hope you are getting these things clear if you are if you are getting these things please uh, give me a thumbs up or yes so that i will have an idea okay so it gives you a cardiac axis or the direction of the cardiac impulses i repeat again we record lead 1 and lead 3 okay and then we plot them on the axis with respect to the center point the magnitude of their deflection of the wave is corresponding to the magnitude of the wave we are getting plotting on the 1 and 3 we draw a perpendicular on both the axes where they terminate and the point of the intersection intersection gives you the main cardiac axis or the direction of the cardiac vector we will take few more examples let us take when there is let us take when there is a when there is a normal cardiac axis normal cardiac axis so we have a lead one recording we have a lead one recording you can say a positive deflection you can see a positive deflection here okay this was corresponding to a positive deflection since it's a positive deflection we draw the arrow or we draw the plotting towards the positive wave uh hello mr satyam gupta thank you and look at the lead 3 look at the lead 3 wave the lead 3 wave has a positive deflection and also has a negative deflection so we subtract the negative deflection from the positive wave and the net output or the or the difference we plot on the lead 3 since again it is the positive deflection is more than the negative one then the axis also gives on to be the positive wave okay towards plus towards plus so once we have plotted these two axes lead 1 and lead 3 axis again we will draw a perpendicular line from both the axis and their intersection will give you the main cardiac axis so since we are taking it as a normal recording the main cardiac axis we are getting is of 59 degrees main cardiac axis of 59 degrees now if i ask you one question here if i ask you one question here suppose suppose if there is a if there is an and that's going to be the next uh slide itself you suppose there is a very high positive deflection lead 1 and a very low positive deflection lead 3 can you guess what will happen now lead 1 and lead 3 okay so i'm just plotting i'm going to plot it in front of you i'm going to plot these things in front of you so lead 1 has a higher deflection so we'll just take a bigger deflection of lead 1 and lead 3 has a slow smaller deflection so we'll take a smaller magnitude of lead 3 right now what we are going to do we are going to take a what we are going to do we are going to take a perpendicular bisector we call it a perpendicular bisector in uh, geometry so if you take a perpendicular bisector lead 1 uh, this perpendicular bisector and lead 3 lead 3 will have a perpendicular bisector in this direction so what will be the mean axis the mean axis has the mean axis has a shift and is shifted where towards the lead 1 or towards the lead 3 yes can you tell me people in the group can you answer the axis will shift in which direction now the axis will shift in which direction will it shift towards lead 3 more of or will it shift towards lead 1 yes yes very good it's going to be towards the left axis because because the lead one has a higher representation very nice very right 
yes so i hope you are getting the things clear very good so it is going to be sorry so this is going to be the mean cardiac axis which is going to be less than 59 say it becomes 40 or 50 whatever it is so it's 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 the left axis deviation yes very good very good dr satyam to dipu very good now i have actually taken uh, two examples here can you guess which axis deviation is this can you all guess which axis deviation is this yes it's a left axis deviation it's a left axis deviation now what happens when a left ventricular when there is a left ventricle is hypertrophied so what happens the hypertrophy left ventricle pulls a large amount of electrical depolarization and it takes longer duration to get repolarized left ventricle has a higher mass value or higher muscle uh, mass so it takes a longer time to get depolarized and since it can take longer time to de uh, it depolarize it takes longer time to repolarize also so it for a longer duration it remains depolarize it for a longer it remains depolarized so lead 3 you can see lead 3 what it says lead 3 says that the lead 3 has a negative reflection which says that which says that the impulses of the heart the impulses of the heart the heart has pulled the impulses towards the left ventricle so all the impulses are pulled towards the left ventricle. So it's a negative deflection now. It's a less positive, more negative. You can see less positive, more negative. So you take this difference from positive to negative, and you plot it towards a negative electrode. Plot it towards a negative electrode. Okay. Lead one. It has more of a positive recording, and very high positive recording. So you take the equal magnitude and put it on the lead one. You put it on a lead one. And again, we take an angle bisector, and what we can see, we can see that the actual mean axis has now shifted towards more of left side, left axis deviation. In fact, it has become zero, and it has become towards the left axis deviation. You can say it become fifteen degree, or you can say minus fifteen degrees. Okay. Now let us take the other example also. Yes. What is this shift? People in a group can tell me what is this shift here? What when this shift? It's a left or right axis deviation. This one is a left axis, right axis deviation. You can see here that lead one, lead one has a strong negative potential recorded. So what we are going to do? We are going to draw this same magnitude on the lead one, but towards the negative side. Lead one has got a strong negative electrode, so we will draw the same negative electrode onto the negative side of the lead one. Lead three has a positive electrode now. Lead three has a positive recording, so we will draw the magnitude of lead three on towards the positive side, towards the positive side. So what is the net output again? Taking a perpendicular bisector, we see that the mean axis has now shifted towards the 180, means the left to right shift. So the axis has shifted to the right. So this gives you a very important uh, information about the right axis deviation. Right axis deviation. So that's that's all for today's session. We have we have planned to understand very simple manner in a very simple language. We have tried to understand the left axis and right axis deviation. Uh, I, I welcome you all on the Unacademy platform, and uh, I, I have uh, I have a very good offer for all of you. If you want to register for the complete package of the NEET PG preparation. Then, then you can use my code Vijay Gupta 15, and using this code, you get a, you get an awesome discount on your on your package, whichever you want to choose. Uh, generally, we have a 10% discount, but keep watching and uh, yes, thank you, thank you, Satyam Gupta. Uh, I appreciate uh, you being so interactive. Thank you, Deepu. Uh, so I wish you all the best and. Do uh, do register yourself on an academy because there is, there is a very big part of uh, live interactive sessions on an academy. 
uh, which you can always attend even though if you don't pay anything so it's always free which we are doing is called a special classes and there are some content which are also paid content so you uh, be be there on an academic platform you can always search me on various platforms like vijay gupta physiology satyam yes it's going to be very good as satyam you are fmg student and i have taught fmg students in i have been to china and ukraine and uh, i have been to uh, tianjin jilin many places in uh, in foreign countries i appreciate the efforts you take and uh, yes these things are available online so you can take advantage of these things very good uh, so that's all for today's class use the code vijayguta15 try to register yourself on an academy and uh, you will get more information from all the subjects if you have got all the subjects at one platform so and all the lectures all the sessions are live interactive sessions where you can attend the lecture and where you can actually uh, talk to the uh, educator while you are listening to the lectures so that's that's uh, the advantage of having a live interactive sessions on thursday on thursday i am also taking one more session on ecg and next tuesday thursday also there is sessions on ecg and after that also we are going to have a sessions on ecg so uh, just mark your calendar that every tuesday and thursday from 10 pm to 10:30 pm i'll be taking live sessions on ecg okay thank you thank you dr laya so very much uh, please mark your calendar every tuesday and thursday from 10 pm to 10:30 pm i will be live on youtube for all of you people thank you thank you very much